This is the, uh, the massive betrayal that'll define WoW lore. Okay, we'll see about this. D uh, that'll define WoW lore? Watch, stop normalizing. I don't want to read, I don't want to, I, I don't want to hear, like, the Nazi thing, okay? Anybody that refers to people nowadays as Nazis is, like, I mean, most of them are just, like, hysterical. Okay, uh, well, let's go. Yeah, it's clickbait, basically. Hey everyone and welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. Today we've got a very interesting topic. So, Ashara's Eternal Palace has been cleared on normal and heroic By difficulty. Me. And that does mean that we have the end cinematic for this raid. Okay. And as far as end cinematics go, it certainly has been a little bit more of a controversial one. It's I been think a it cock tease, man. A lot shorter than a lot of people would have hoped. But there still is quite a lot that we can get from the lore. Oh, wow, covered. new setting. It does tell us quite a lot about the future of the game. Look at so that. So in today's video, there actually is a fair amount of stuff is to get into. Is that So let's just do that. Now, for context, during the fight, Ashara is taunting us about how the heart of Azeroth is going to be used to shatter the prison of Nazoth. Okay. And we sort of see the heart power being coalesced into this device that is in the middle of the room. Right. Though nobody was massively concerned about that, I think the characters just decided we'll defeat Ashara and then deal with the weird glowy ball heart of Azeroth and Azoth thing. Now, unfortunately for Ashara, she bugged out at 35% and was easily killed by the initial wave of teams who went through there. And whenever Ashara Must is be defeated, nice. what do you see? Well, she falls down to the ground and she is not dead. She breathes a little bit and then she passes out. And okay. when you look at the camera work, she is very clearly distraught about this. Looking yeah, she's at got her, her ass beat, of course she is. eyes, the way that they are really showing frailty in how she moves her hands. For her, her entire plan has just collapsed and fallen over, and then she looks up and she sees her two enemies, Lorthamar yep. and Jaina, going there to finish the job. Now, there's a bit of a problem here. Lorthamar and Jaina are very negligent because while they are very slowly and dramatically walking towards Ashara, what's happening? Well, the device that Ashara was actually powering up, you know, the whole point of that fight, that begins to actually activate. So yes, this device, it has sucked up all that delicious Heart of Azeroth power and then it is unleashed clearly shattering the prison, shattering those big massive chains going into the depths below, and freeing Nazoth. That's great. I do great. find it quite strange that Lorthamar and Jaina really did absolutely nothing to stop that. No, they just stood there. They didn't it. even kill Ashara and finish her a little bit of an odd thing, Blizz, but anyway, the chains fall down, and I wonder if this is overanalyzing, but... I mean, the whole circle of stars is where this fight takes place. And yep. when you look at the chains falling down into the inky blackness, they kind of do look like, they look like sort of fantasy stardust, fantasy nebula, that kind of thing. Well, nebula, I suppose. So um, okay. there could be a little bit of a nod there. Anyway, they fall down. You see this writhing void, and then what happens? Well, the Eye of Nazoth opens, the whole area is flooded with orange. The only and good part of the cinematic. thinking about the size of those chains, they are absolutely, like, the chains are massive, therefore his eye is absolutely massive. And it was confirmed that over in the Shrine of Storms, that was actually a little bit of Nazoth. So the sheer scale of Nazoth is seemingly just a little bit silly. Oh, that's now, actually true. I never even thought of that. The previous old gods like Cthune and yogg is that we were fighting essentially manifesta uh, manifestations of them in their prisons. Well, it could be that this is the actual full-sized body of Nazoth. Now, if that is the case, then that is not something that we fought before, so that is actually quite new for the lore of World of Warcraft, and I suspect okay. actually something that could be quite cool in terms of what Blizzard could actually do with it. But anyway, at this stage, things are a bit odd for our partnership between Ashara and Nazoth, because as uh, Nazoth is free, he's awake, stuff's going good, but Ashara pretty much is uh, unconscious and dying. Well, not for long. So we see those smoky, void, tendril tentacles rise up from where Nazoth is, just looking, you know, exactly like how you saw them in the opening cinematic, but with the power dynamics entirely being shifted. So they penetrate the room where the Ashara fight took place, they pick her up, she is resuscitated, and pulled into a void portal. Now here's the thing, when you actually play that back frame by frame, Ashara Wrong looks hole. shocked and horrified. 
right? So whenever she's first defeated, well, yeah. she is distraught. It seems like that's well, she just got her ass beat. Her old world. It's all crashing down. Duh. And what we sort of see when she gets sucked into the void portal, though, that seems to be fear. At least that's my read of it. I think that's how they've animated her. And I think that's really what Blizzard are going for. But of course, she gets sucked into that. And there you go. That's it. The cinematic ends. And this leaves us in quite a strange position because... Like, I don't get how, like, obviously... It doesn't make much sense to me. Like, why would Ashar fuck around with Nazoth? Like, like tease him and shit. Because he's... And, like, whenever she's trying to help him escape. Because you think he's going to be happy about that whenever he gets out? He's going to be fucking pissed. He's going to be fucking mad. Right below where our characters are, Nazoth's eye has just opened. That whole area is flooded with orange, so Nilotha, etc., whatever's down there, is now active. We seemingly have no acknowledgement of that. And whenever yeah, she that was pulled away by that, uh, by that Void's tentacle into the portal, well, it's not like that suddenly means that Nazoth down there below us has also disappeared. So it seems like he's just going to be chilling out down there for a while, and Ashara has been pulled off to some other location. I would suspect she's been pulled off to the next to, raid, you know, deep underground, the next raid. sort of old Black Empire stuff. Uh, if I was betting, that's where I'd say yeah. Shara is. But quite clearly, this has essentially all went to Nazoth's plan. And it very much has not went to Ashara's plan. You really do see a lot of, well, the tables constantly being turned. In the Warbringers Ashara cinematic, what do we see? Well, she is in a position of powerlessness as compared to him, in a way. I mean, she is literally about to drown, so there is that. Now, she yeah. does correctly say, well, if I'm really powerful and you let me die, you're going to be trapped there forever. So it's not like he is all mighty and all powerful in that stage. But, I mean, you just need to look at the imagery. Ashara's strength does not come from her situation, it comes from her character there. Well, when you look in, say, the opening cinematic of Patch 8.2, what do you see? Well, you see very similar imagery, but the power is flipped. Ashara is taunting Nazoth for being, you know, have done locked that shit. up and stuffed away yep, in a little shouldn't box have fucked down with there them. below, while she is powerful and she is enacting her plan. And what do we see here? Well, again, the exact opposite, with that big smoky black tendril coming up, but this time Nazoth is not in a position of weakness, she is, and essentially she has been played. And all of this is quite interesting when you think about what the alliance between those characters really is supposed to be, and what Nazoth's actually been planning this entire time. Because if players are defeated by Ashara in the raid, she says, Oh, Nizoth was wrong. You're not worthy. Now, what is that referring to? That is referring to the Crucible of Storms. What the fuck? The Crucible of Storms overtly is a test. It's a test set up by Nizoth. Now, clearly, Ashara I thinks and that he obviously is most of the alliance did. us for some other purpose. But as you see in this raid, what Nizoth is actually testing us for is whether we are able to seemingly defeat Ashara. Because it's obviously Nazoth's plan for Ashara to essentially, you know, get us into the right place, zoop our heart of Azeroth into the thing, and then essentially be disposed with when she is no longer needed. Duh. Now, there's actually a bit of a parallel here in Ashara's Fucking actions. Duh. Because it's pretty much, well, almost exactly what Ashara does with Ashvane. You know, they strike up this deal, Ashara promises Ashvane a bunch of power, Ashvane thinks she is acting in her own interest, she thinks she is the protagonist of her own story, well, that's turns good, out no, yeah, that, Ashvane is true. just being played by Ashara, and once Ashara's Shit. pretty much done with her, she transforms her into the big brute that we end up fighting in the raid. That's right. So you sort of see a little bit of a parallel there between what Ashara did to Ashvane and what Nazoth is maybe going to be doing to Ashara. That makes sense. Now, of course, this whole thing is really a little bit convoluted. It is, I mean, I think it's well, set it up as a mystery box. We're still it's not convoluted. really sure what Nazoth was testing us for. But the thing here is, from Ashara's perspective, a lot of this is quite odd because... Right, Ashara is not planning and being defeated, obviously from what we see here. Yet, if we defeat her, she taunts us for not being worthy. So, what is her plan? Is her plan to prove his test wrong? She at one point does pretty much say you're trapped as I am during the raid, so is she maybe quite aware of what's going on with the Nazoth situation? And maybe she is trying to seize some power and ultimately betray him, but it turns out Betraying Nazoth, Nazoth. Right. I'm we sure that's gonna go well. To defeat her, thus robbing her of the chance to double yep. cross him, meaning that he can zoop his tentacle up, pull her through the void portal, and then I presume 
I mean, I presume he's going to turn her into a Gromash Hellscream type character. Pretty much. I think, or, you know, like with Ashvane even, I think he's going to try to do some stuff to, you know, turn her into some sort of crazy void monstrosity, but that I think she will ultimately end up siding with us and being a morally grey character. I think that's pretty much what's going to happen for the future. But anyway, Nazoth's plan here is pretty darn clear. So what does he do? He tests us to find out that we are powerful enough to defeat Ashara. He pretty yep. much knows that, like, his entire goal with Ashara, right, and what he establishes in Warbringers is, hey, let's ally together, you will break me out of my prison, we'll rule together. Well, you know, he tests that we are powerful enough to defeat her, he knows that we will defeat her if given the chance. So, from his perspective, he obviously knows, okay, if I can get those players to defeat Ashara, but also get Ashara to free me at the same time, then I'm just going to get a whole bunch of birds killed with one then, stone. Yeah, he, so, he's just in charge. Plan. He runs shit. What does he do? Well, he puts... I don't see why he really needs to worry about that. I mean, he's a fucking old god. I mean, the Titans had trouble dealing with the old gods. I mean, I'm assuming, like, Ashara to him would be, like, a non-issue. So I don't really understand how, like, he'd be that worried about it. Uh, I mean, look at Yog saron I mean, that caused a big problem over in, in Northrend, and we were basically just beating one of his pimples. I, I mean, these old gods are just really, really, really powerful. The Black Blade of the Empire into Sylvanas' hands. She gives that to Nathan. He's the weakest of the old gods. Yeah, um, well, I'm pretty sure, like... It's like a, a very weak person can still step on an ant. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's basically the power dynamic between Ashara and Nazoth. I mean, Nazoth is a fucking old god. I, I mean, give me a break. The Black Blade is then used to pretty much lure everyone into Nazatar. Sylvanas, to a degree, is seemingly in in this or knows that something big is going to go down. Um, so he essentially just uses Ashara to cripple us, save himself, uh, yep. or break himself out of prison, and then, yeah, who the hell knows what's going to happen with, um, with Ashara. We're essentially left now in a position that is rather strange. Nazoth has been unleashed, technically, if you actually look at the cinematic, but yeah, that's basically. not reflected in-game at all, and it's not going to be for quite some time. So... That is a little bit of a, a strange thing. Ashara is now a mystery box character, just like Zalateth. Just about anything could happen to her. From the perspective of Ashara, she's going to be a bit pissed off at us for defeating her. She's going yeah, to be very probably. pissed off at Nazoth for massively double-crossing her. And that does make me think that we are going to get a Gromash Hellscream-like scenario, as I mentioned oh, earlier, geez. where perhaps in patch 8.3, we will side with Ashara, or, you know, she'll side with us. Oh, uh, here we go. And maybe she'll die getting rid of him. Maybe here we go. Maybe she'll herself. Maybe something will happen between her and Sylvanas that takes Sylvanas out of the Horde. There's actually quite a few things that could Yeah, they've happen. got to get rid of and Sylvanas. Really, I think that's the point. I think that is exactly where Blizzard wanted to leave us. They quite clearly did not want to do a Tomb of Sargaris, where we flat out know where the next patch is. Right? That's that's pretty obvious. I they wish we did. They could have teased so much. I like that. It Like, the end of the Tomb of Sargeras, so it's the best fucking ending they ever had, right? In Tomb of Sargeras. You, you finally killed KJ. Velen and KJ made up. They're like, we're still boys. Don't worry about it. I know you've been doing this bullshit for like 10,000 years, but... You know what, man? I, I get where you're coming from. And, and and they're chill. They crash onto the other planet. Uh, Illidan makes the uh, the crystal pull Argus next to Azeroth. And it's in everybody's fucking skybox. Everybody sees it. They know it's coming. And that was the coolest fucking part about it. Is you knew, like, the impending doom of Argus was there. Now, obviously, Argus was just go over there and kill 12 demons. It wasn't really as powerful and important as people thought that it would be. Boiser doesn't really do a very good job uh, communicating that, but I, I like the fact that you knew what things were gonna, what was going to happen. More here with where the game is going to take us, and they chose not it was to. Hype as Why fuck, could that dude. be? Well, I don't want to be cynical, but I think it's pretty obvious. Being honest with you, the storytelling of this expansion is a lot more distributed between the patches. So the point five patches of That's very the FA, true. they do have a lot of story. A yep. point one point five covered a lot of very important lore for setting up the um, Dazar lore raid. And I'm very sure if you look at what happens in the war campaign, if you look at oh, how Nazitar is left, 
you know, this cinematic's not going to tell us what the next, like, patch is going, or the next big raid and the end of the expansion is going to be. 8.2.5 is going to be the thing that does that. So what we have to do is work out what is the final raid going to be and what is the sort of, you know, the dull it's and be the story between 8.25 and 8.3. It's got to be I suppose it can go in a few ways. So patch 8.2.5, no matter what, it's going to be setting up a little bit of this and off the shower stuff or whatever happens in 8.3. That's pretty darn likely. Now, there's basically, basically it all depends on, is the final raid going to be factions or is it going to be Nazoth? Because yeah, yeah, if the final raid it. is going to One be factions, the then they would be saving Nazoth and Ashara for the 9-0 expansion or for Tenno. And yeah, 8-3 would be something I assume to do with the big rebellion that's been brewing and everyone coming together to boot out Sylvanas. Although, obviously... I feel like that actually does make more sense, to be fair. Uh, e even though I don't want to see a repeat, uh, it does make more sense that Sylvanas will be the focus rather than, uh, what do you call it, rather than Nazoth. So they can have the entire next expansion kind of be kicked off by Nazoth having some sort of like corrupting influence, tie that into a level squish, and actually kind of make sense out of things that would be bringing in a lot of the life versus death stuff and the other themes that have been seeping into the Warcraft universe over the last while. Right. And uh, if that's going to be the final raid, then 825 is probably going to be setting that up and wrapping up our, you know, story for now with Nazoth and Ashara. Okay. However, if Nazoth is going to be the final villain of patch 8.3, then it's pretty darn clear that patch 8.2.5 is going to have to focus on dealing with the faction narrative, the burning of Thunderbluff, whatever's going to oh, happen geez. there. Oh, of the things if they burn Thunderbluff, I'm gonna be mad. Uh, cinematic lore breakdown videos. So that's be so fucking mad. what I think is going to happen. Ian Hazakostas, of course, the game director of World of Warcraft, did say that this patch would pretty much tell us what is going on for the, you know, the final boss of this expansion. And that does mean that if you're going to read this patch, like, if you're going to read it, and I think talk about what's obvious, yeah, Nazoth has just woken up. Yeah, probably duh. going to kill him in patch 8.3. And that means that the faction narrative is probably going to be mostly resolved in patch 8.2.5, which I do think makes sense because they've already done a faction raid. I don't know if they're going to do that again. And I don't think they're going to just have Sylvanas be the end boss and killer. I think it's pretty clear they have other things they want to do with that character. So yeah, that's essentially what I think is going on. If you think about Nazoth now, we are pretty pissed off about, uh, with him, obviously. Well, yeah, is yeah, going to be duh. pretty pissed off with him, obviously. And if you actually listen to what Zalatath said for years, okay. Zalatath doesn't like Nazoth. Now, sure, Zalatath recently played along with Nazoth, but if you look at the lore there, well, they weren't really friends. The other old gods, uh, yeah, really screwed over Zalatath. So a part of me does wonder if you know, there'll sort of be, like, alternate Void Forces going against Nazoth, and that that is a part of how Blizzard uh, will sort of bring in the Light and Void mm, sort of narrative, where you can have bad Light I don't know and about that, Void, dude. and that maybe Zalatath would be, you know, something like that. Perception, thanks for five tell, subs, man. But again, Thank I think you. the point that I made earlier stands, it, it's a mystery box right? It's just the J.J. Abrams mystery box. They can yeah. do essentially whatever they want with this stuff. Now, the final thing that is said in this uh, cinematic okay. is all eyes will be opened. Now, of course, that does tie into a lot of the Void Whispering stuff and how that usually sort of plays out. You know, with the Void, you're opening your eyes to infinite knowledge, but that knowledge is maddening. You're seeing potential futures that may not happen. You're seeing false dreams, all of that stuff. That's pretty... I feel like that's just his eyes. I mean, that's what kind of makes sense. Warcraft universe. If we're going to take it a bit more literally and you look at, say, the Eye of Nazoth, or the, yeah. sorry, the Gift of Nazoth that's Ooh, given my to players helmet. after the Crucible of Storms raid, well... That's I mean, right, I forgot eye. about that. It's a third eye on your head. So, yeah, saying all eyes will be open, it's pretty darn clear that, um, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that's all sort of linked together and that everybody is going to be marching along happily to his uh, lovely Lovecraftian tune, which, of course, if you look at, say, um, Nyarlathotep, the, uh, you know, the, the prose poem, the Lovecraft one, I think everyone's okay. sort of eyes being, you know... I don't know what the hell that is. I have no idea what the hell that is. And all that. All of that spooky stuff that they really try to spin with Nazoth, that all just seems to be right on theme. And I think it does pretty much hint that we're going to be having something Nihiloth-alike for... Uh, the, if they don't, the I'll be mad. The game. 
So really, I think that's just about all that I have to say with this uh, cinematic. I have no idea how long I've went on for, but uh, it was only a minute of footage, so... <laughs> I mean, yeah, who knows how Look, much I got Look, he's extending content as long as I am. This I is, is impressive. I think it's an interesting topic. I think it's a little 18 bit... 18 minutes going into one video? It's a minute long? I think that would have excited players a good bit more, um, and I think especially That's because good. the faction narrative is not overly exciting to players, it seems, uh, it would have been good if more of that stuff was teased, at least in the here and now. It could all be playing into some sort of larger plan the Blizzard have for the narrative and how they're going to unveil all of that. But uh, yeah, I suppose I'll just end this by kicking it to you. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think Ashara will be friend or foe? Do you think she will be okay. alive or dead um, by the end of this expansion? Do you think Nazoth will be the end boss of this expansion? Uh, and I suppose, did you like the cinematic? Did you not? Let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. And with that, I shall see you next time. It's like, I like the cinematic. I mean, I think everybody liked the cinematic. The fucking problem, what was it? It wasn't even that. It wasn't as long as it should have been. That's all there was to it. How do you feel about flying into new zones? It's fucking great, man. Ashara is going to be the star of a very large hentai episode. That's right, dude. She's still kind of sexy for a fish. Look at that. Somebody actually quoted McConnell. Oh, my God. Oh my god, I actually got quoted? Yeah, she's still kind of sexy for a fish. Oh my god. That's Dude, actually I'm, true. I'm actually moving up yeah. in the world. Look at that, man. Over the Black Empire isn't going to be in this 8.3. I want it to be a whole expansion. I, I agree with this, too. Uh, they should make it much bigger than uh, than what people are uh, are talking about here. Uh, someone made a deal with Ultimate Darkness and was betrayed. Never saw that before. Yeah, a big fucking surprise. Uh, wait, so basically the Thousand-Eyed Squid Demon doesn't actually care about keeping his end of the bargain. What a twist. Wow, yeah, I would have never expected that. Uh, Shara is Illidan 2.0. Here, what if they do this, right? What if they release Nazoth? Now, what is the only force that can stop an old god? Dildos. I don't think Dragon. that Dragon. Was... No. Dragon dildos. It's the Titans. With cum. Okay. All right. Uh, so here's why I think, here's what's going to happen. What if at the end of the next expansion, we somehow get Sargeras to work with us to defeat Nazoth? Or towards the end of the next expansion, if they make it an, uh, a, a, an old god expansion? Because that's the only thing that could possibly defeat Nazoth. Like, Sargeras is literally the only thing that could defeat Nazoth. Like, no, nothing else in the entire game would even come close. That's the only way it would make sense. Sargeras would just cleave Azeroth. That's going to happen 100%. Uh, Jignoris Azeroth, Illidan's gonna be pissed then? Well, Illidan would come back, right? I mean, they've had some time to talk it out. They'll probably be fine. Uh, Dude. What? What the fuck? What? Click the, uh, link I just sent you on Discord. Okay. This is good to open on stream, right? Maybe. What's he doing? He's just restreaming my stream, it looks like. Uh, Dignoris Azeroth, Illidan's gonna be pissed. There's four then. people watching. This guy's restreaming your stream. Who gives a fuck? Uh, I, I mean, it, it's, it's like four people. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I, it, it's not, that doesn't affect me. Uh, report it. I'll deal with it later, okay? I, I don't want to deal with it right now. No, uh, anyway, uh, let, let, let's see over here. Surprise up. Yeah, I'll report it later on. Uh, I, I don't want to deal with it right now. Uh, anyway, here's what I'm really trying to say, okay? Uh, so announcement seems better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, copying Andy? Yeah, exactly. Uh, four people can donate you $30. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, though. I mean, let's be realistic. Okay, uh, let's see. What else is this? Okay, um, didn't we kill Yogg and Cthun? Um, no, I don't really think so. I mean, like, you can't really kill the old gods, right? I mean, you can't do that. Um, okay, let's see here. Okay, just one second. Yeah, you can't kill the old gods. 
Uh, I mean, even Yasaraj. Is Yasaraj actually dead? I'm actually not even sure about that. Uh, it's not a Twitch. No, I don't want to do that right now. Uh, true. Yeah, you can't kill them. So we have Cthune, right? Cthune's not dead. Uh, you're in Hemorrhoid's video? Okay, well, let me... Let me see how long it is. Okay, uh... Actually, let me see this thing. Uh, patch 8.2 survival guide. Uh, because obviously Blizzard made one of these. Wait, Cthune's definitely dead. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. When was the last time we heard anything about Cthune since vanilla? Just, just give me one instance. He's not dead. Like, I guarantee you he's not dead, so you, dude. So you can't give me one instance we've heard of anything from Cthune at all? No, I actually, I can't think of any single instance. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, but he's not dead. There's no fucking way he's dead. Uh, Zalatath talks about Cthune. I mean, you can't kill Cthune. He's an old god. Like, the only things that can kill the old gods are the titans. Right? A in my opinion, here's what I think they could do. I if they want to make the next expansion an old god expansion, they should have the first tier be some sort of, like, you know, introductory tier. Have the second tier be the tier where players realize that there's no fucking way that they can beat Nazoth, right? And have it be like one of the first times where players actually lose the last fight of the uh, of the instance, right? Have it actually up against Nazoth and have them actually just lose to him, right? Like imagine he has, um, you know, 100% health and the only thing that you have to do is get him down to 99% health and then the fight's over, right? And that's the equivalent of like a Mythic Raid boss. Um, so... And obviously that wouldn't translate very well, but the idea of that would obviously be pretty cool. Okay, you get him down 1% healthy, and the fight's over. He kills you. Um, and you realize that you have to solicit the help of the Titans. And the only Titan who would be able to kill him, right, is the most powerful Titan, Sargeras. So they could bring Sargeras back into the story as basically, like, a good guy to destroy Nazar. Dude. What if, Wait, that's following only... that line of thinking, Go ahead. what if, what if him being imprisoned or put back in the chair with Illidan, what if that is like his, his like rehab, his cleansing? and then years from now, yeah, his, yeah, yeah, like years from now, he comes back out, or like next expansion or whatever, he comes back out, and he's like all shiny and blue, and he's like, you know, back to his original self. Yeah. And he helps us kill old gods. What That'd just be fucking be crazy. That would Dude. be fucking crazy. Holy fuck. Because Sarger both Sargeras and Odin come back? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's the only way it could happen, right? Because that's, the, yeah, reformed. Uh, there's nothing terrible idea. Well, that's the best idea they, they have, right? I mean, I, I could see. I mean, I don't know really how else it could uh, it could fit together. Uh, the only old god that's really dead in Yogg is death almost destroyed Azeroth. That's why the Titans locked him up with the old gods, because the killing him would, would destroy a planet. Wait a minute. I thought it was Yasaraj, right? Whenever uh, Amon Thul grabbed Yasaraj out of the uh, out of Azeroth and almost killed the planet. Uh, how do you think a fight with an old god would look like in WoW? A lot of tentacles. That's basically it. Fight an entire zone that's the old god or fight against some avatar of the old god. Um, in my mind, right, like, how would a, a fight against an old god work? I would say you walk into, like, an open field, right, that's, like, the size of, um, I, I, I don't know, like, the biggest zone in the game, like, uh, Mulgore or something, and, wait, what's this? Oh, I think I have this, I, I think I bought this the other day, just give me one second, I don't want to take that if I bought it. Uh, I actually, I bought a lot of these things here, uh, one second here, yeah, I did buy it. I bought it for 2,000 gold. Thank you, though, man. I, I appreciate your uh, your offer. Uh, so the point is here that... Uh, no, no, the guy traded me something. Uh, but Void Wards might want to kill the old gods by now. Sargeras hates the Void Wards. So I think that he might do it. Well, yeah, exactly. They have a common enemy. Uh, let me read the rest of these, too. Uh, so, yeah, I would say, like, basically, you start off in, like, a zone that's, like, this massive, expansive area, and then the old god comes out, and he's, like, literally a thousand times bigger than Deathwing, and you can barely even hit one of his eyes, and it's just so massive that you just know that while you're doing a fight that he's not going to die, and you actually lose the fight, and he kills everyone. Like, that, that would be, in my opinion, the best way to do an old god fight. Uh, Sargeras so believes the only way to avoid destroy all planets. Well, you know, I'm sure they can retcon that. I mean, all they have to do is just shift that a little bit, and it'll be okay. 
What would the loot be? I, I don't know, honestly. Like, I could see it being, like, you don't even get any loot. You just get a crystal or something like that. Or you get, like, your items void forged or something because you're actually damaged by an old god. Like, I don't know. I think that'd be badass. Like, there's plenty of ways they could take things. Like, give you, like, a certain level of essences or something because you killed the boss. Like, there's a million different ways they could do it. Uh, let's see. Best way to make WoW 2 is use this to destroy Azeroth. That's great. Uh, yeah, void forge. Exactly. Um, okay, let me see here. Uh, imagine 9.0 being the old god expansion where they've taken over the world and we have to reclaim our lands with or without Illidan and Titans when we fight all four badass monsters in a patch. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I have no idea. Okay, just a second, Patch. Let me... Okay, so come you to... You want to do the video? Uh, what? You want to do the video? Yeah, we'll watch the video. One second. This guy wants to show me, uh, an item here that I need to get from my mount. Okay, let me go ahead and, and minimize this. I'm going to go over to, uh, to Bash Cutter and, uh, and do that real quick. Uh, which video did, were you, uh, were you looking at? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay, never mind. All right, just one second. Read the rest of these. Okay. Why is the story so convoluted and all over the place for seemingly every next expansion? Uh, I thought the real horde and ally conflict expansion. Then there's all these B, uh, weird B plot lines. Uh, now old god stuff. It's wasted potential in my opinion. No, I, I think that you just don't fully understand the story. Honestly, I, I don't think that the potential potential is wasted. Uh, I think there's a lot more to it that people don't see that's not surface level.